Well, I'm back at it again. Life's been in a way for a while now, but we'll see if I can get more of this done. And tonight, I think I'm going to try to hook up the grid power first, then I'll run the wires from the transfer switch to the main panel. Well, the first thing I thought I'd show here is an interesting phenomenon. Right now, power is off from the inverter, so I have the breaker turned off. The transfer switch breaker is turned off. Everything's turned off, basically. There is no power, or should be no power, going to this panel whatsoever. And right now, if I check between ground and neutral, I'm not getting any voltage, really. Now, here's an interesting part. I go over here and disconnect my temporary grid power that's running to that extension cord going in the panel over there and then I check between the neutral and the ground and guess what now I have 38.6 volts and if I go to here I get 16 volts and if I go to this phase I get 17.5 volts. Took me a bit to figure this out but then I realized that is because since EG4 removes the ground screw now that balances the neutral to the ground the neutral is now floating and that's causing the voltage I believe between the neutral and the ground and between the different phases here as far as that goes. So something to keep in mind here so if you disconnect your grid power, you're going to have to worry about voltage being on a supposedly dead circuit here. I don't know how much amperage there actually is in this, probably not much, but still, there's voltage, and you probably don't want that while you're working inside an electrical panel. Alright, I disconnected the neutral wire from the inverters I was going into the neutral bus here. Now when I check between the ground bus and the neutral bus, I'm basically getting no voltage at all. So, yes, that voltage was coming from the inverter. Well, I got the 4.3 Romex roughly run here. I cannot say that that was an enjoyable experience. It was definitely a struggle the entire way. And also you have to worry about chafing up the outer sheath too much as well which is a concern so I don't know maybe I would choose the liquidite over the Romex considering it was like wrestling a python through the floor choice so your choice up to you either way works I guess well, I got the Romex pulled through into this box with the bushing and all that and I got over here, you have the knockout knocked out with a one inch clamp in place. So now I need to feed this into the main panel, but I'm not going to do that with the main power on. So I'm going to turn the main breaker off. Alright, I got the wire pulled in, got it stripped back. Now I'm going to get this thing wired up on the main panel side. I'm going to drop in a 70 amp breaker right about there and then hopefully get the power back on soon so far I have the ground and the neutral terminated and I did have to add a neutral lug here because 4 gauge would not fit in the existing bus bar I got my 70 amp breaker in I'm going to go ahead and terminate these next wired up on the main panel side. Got our 7 amp breaker. Got them wires routed all nice and neat. Now I just need to go ahead and turn all the power back on and then I can go over and work on that side of it. Alright, back on grid. Have the inverter shut down. Again, for that floating neutral voltage issue. I don't think it would really cause any issues for that low voltage, but I'm not willing to find out. Not worth the risk. So now I'm going to wire this up here and have a permanent proper 70 amp grid connection going to the inverter.
On this one, rather than wiring into a breaker, since it is actually a proper sub panel, I'm going to hook the four gauge from the main panel straight into the main lugs of this panel. She's all wired up, and I got her flipped on. We got 122 volts coming from the grid into the inverter. And now, if I want to charge from grid, I can charge at 40 amps instead of 20 amps because I don't have to worry about popping the breaker when charging those two batteries over there. So that'll be nice as well, especially since the weather's going to crap and I'm having to use grid charging a lot more. So this will be a nice upgrade. Wow. Grid charging at 40 amps from a single inverter makes the inverter sound like it's going to explode or something. Yep, charging it to about 20 amps. It's another day and we're back at it again. Today I want to finish wiring up the transfer switch and move over the refrigerator, which is the bottom breaker there, into the critical loads panel. Eventually I'm going to move some more circuits over, but I think I'm going to start with just the fridge and the freezer. I have an Emporia view I plan on installing here and monitoring my power usage so I can see what circuits I want to move over next. Eventually I want at least the refrigerator, the freezer, the furnace, and some kitchen outlets and some lighting circuits on the inverter here at a minimum. So we'll see what happens as time goes on. I've gotten this far. I got the neutral in, which is a real pain. <laughs> Anything to do with one gauge is a pain as far as this THHN goes. It's just not flexible. I got the second leg run over into the main panel. I'm working on getting the first leg over to the panel, but whatever moron designed this transfer switch said, hey, they're going to be running at least one gauge because it's a 100 amp circuit. circuit. Let's go ahead and put the ground bus bar right there where it's right in the way of everything you want to do. I have no idea what they were thinking. There is not enough room in this transfer switch for one gauge. I, I'm i sorry, but there really isn't. There's no way to make it neat, and it kind of bothers me. <laughs> but I am sure I'll get that wire in there, and then we can go over and uh, have some fun in the main panel here, which will make me turn off the power to the entire house. Last time my cats freaked out. Let's see what they do this time. those in. That was a bit of a bear considering that you have two one gauge wires right next to each other. You have to manage to get them around that little corner and then out of the transfer switch in like six inches. And trust me, one gauge does not want to bend that tight. <laughs> so I got my ground reconnected, got my neutral wrapped in white tape, and we're going to go ahead and get this run over into the main panel. I'm going to have to take out those two breakers there to fit the 100 amp breaker for the transfer switch, but that's fine because one's unused and the other one runs my refrigerator in the kitchen, which needs to be moved over into the critical loads panel anyway. So I'm going to move that at the same time as I do the rest of the work. bit here. This is my favorite electrical work screwdriver. It's your Klein Extend Multi Screwdriver. Link in description. I love this thing because it does all of your electrical bits here. It has both square drives, it has your PH2 Phillips, and you have your straight slots and this is also a nut driver for two common sizes as well for all of your electrical screws so no matter what you're doing with residential electrical unless it's like giant lugs or something like that the screwdriver can do it in one single package so you're not always digging for five million different screwdrivers when you're working on an electrical panel if you need to flip it around to get your square drive you can 
and flip it back around to get your Phillips and then flip it to get your straight slot or your other square drive so it's basically perfect for doing any kind of residential electrical work in my opinion well, I'm moving the circuit over for the refrigerator I already have the deep freeze in there I was planning on running a tandem breaker but for Eaton panels apparently there are two different types of tandem breakers there's this type which is the BRD and then there's type BR the BRDs only work in Eaton panels that have slots cut in the bus, the bus bar tabs like you see there this load center here does not have those cutouts in the tabs so apparently you have to buy the type BR not the BRD to be able to run a tandem breaker in a panel that does not have those little cutouts in the bus bar tabs so buyer beware when you're buying these expensive suckers make sure you get the right one if you have an Eaton panel because even in the same line they have two different breakers for two different panels that are all considered to be the BR line I'll do for now. I want to put them in the same tandem breaker since I only have five slots available currently because I decided to not bridge the two legs of service here and keep them separate unlike I did on the panel over there for the inverter. So as a result I only have five spots to work with here but for now this will work. I did use some nice labels there that's just the sheathing of Romex cut off and then written on and slid over the wire that we can keep track of what is what even when you have the panel cover off note that I only moved over the hot wire not the neutral and the ground wires you do not have to actually move the neutral and ground from the main panel when you're moving a circuit over to a sub panel like this there's already a connection for the neutral and the ground that are linking these two panels together so if you're going to do this don't bother moving all the wires just move the live wire we got the neutral connected now I did have to add that neutral lug to the neutral bus those are technically panel specific the Eaton one was about five bucks I think for some reason the square D ones are more expensive I'm not sure why we got that run over into the transfer switch that's the neutral I have disconnected now for now because I'm using the inverter to run the lights so I'm not sitting here in the dark in the basement once I'm done I'll reconnect that neutral and everything will have a nice neutral bond to ground in the main panel I have the 100 amp breaker in now I need to connect these two wires I think I'll be done for a while For those of you saying, oh wait, don't forget your ground wire, yeah, I almost forgot, but no, it's there. It's almost redundant considering that we have all this steel connecting the boxes together, but it's better safe than sorry. I think that's done. Got the 100 amp breaker in. Everything wired in nicely. Got the 100 amp breaker there. Put my ground in, put my neutral in, got the fridge and the deep freeze on the critical loads panel. I double checked all my torque on all my different screws here to make sure I had everything tight. So I just need to go ahead and put that neutral into that neutral bus there from the inverter. And I think I can go ahead and power it up. Got the neutral in from the inverter. Right now my lights are running off of my little portable power station there. And now I'm going to go and fire up the inverter first and check my power up it there and then we'll go ahead and go from there. Power's on from the inverter. Did all my checks. I got the 120 volts right where I want 120 volts and no 120 volts are anywhere. I do not want 120 volts. Outlet still shows correct. Shows 120 volts, 60 hertz. So that's good. So now I'm going to go ahead and fire up the main panel and check that out. Main 
Engine breaker is now on. Breaker to the transfer switch is on. Transfer breaker is on. And I did all my checks. Got 240 across both legs. Got 120 from one leg to neutral on both legs. So everything seems to be good and even that's still saying correct, even though my yeah, power company is giving me 123 volts right now rather than 120. <laughs> now we're checking the refrigerator outlet before I actually plug it in to the inverter. And that looks to be correct with the proper power output. So now I can move the fridge back onto this outlet. Bridge is officially off grid. I put the cover on the transfer switch. So one less thing to electrocute me, right? Swings on open. We got both the grid side and the inverter side. I'm gonna leave the covers off of these here for now. I have an Emporia view I need to install. Also, I'm going to leave the cover off of that, cover, that panel over there because I need to wire in a outlet to that because I want to put a 20 amp grid outlet next to the inverter in case I want to run a separate grid powered battery charger at some point. But for now, I think we're in decent shape, knock on wood. In fact, there's some wood right here right now. I think I'm just going to go ahead and 